All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, you already know what time it is. And right here, right now, we actually have a hip-hop pioneering East Coast group live on the line. We got the one and only, the almighty Force Brothers, right here, right now. How are you guys doing this evening? We're doing good. Yeah, we're good, you? man. How you doing, bro? Oh, best I can possibly be down here in Canada. It's cold down here, but I'm pretty sure you guys are just across the pond, so I'm pretty sure you guys are feeling that cold weather, too, out there in New York. Yeah, yeah we got hit pretty good. We got hit pretty good the last couple of days. Yeah, DJ Immortal, I think uh, y'all think from your cold down over here to us over here in New York. It's still the breeze out here. <laughs> I, I, I got to say, I was actually checking on the news because you guys are about four hours away from, uh, uh, away, uh, sorry, four hours away from us down here at the station. And I actually was like, damn, that snowstorm is about to hit us and it just missed us, thank God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it got us. It got us. It's all good, though. Well, I think out here in Long Island, I got about uh, 18 inches of snow yesterday. Hmm. Hey, well, I gotta say, I'm glad you guys are safe. Though, yep. You know what I mean? But those snow days are—they're they're good to just stay inside. It's good—it's a good excuse just to be able to stay in and watch movies all day. <laughs> yeah, this yeah, is, I did a lot of binge watching today. <laughs> yeah, watch a lot of watch, watch, not a lot, but a few basketball games. You know, that I was really happy about. But I know you guys are, like, super busy, man, so I'm going to dive into this broadcast, man. But I'll, for a lot of the, I, I, as you guys already know, I know exactly who, who you guys are. But some of the listeners might not be familiar with what you guys did for hip-hop. So I was wondering, for the individuals that might not know the Almighty Force Brothers, if you can, introduce your introduce yourself separately and tell, tell us a little bit more about you guys as, as individual artists. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I started off like I opened up my show. For those of you that don't know me, I'm George Trudy. For short, that's YT Shahi. Yeah, and I'm Raheem. You know, I'm, um, you know, we're, you know, we, we, we doing this since, um, you know, well, uh, I was actually rhyming, you know, since like the mid 70s. You know, but just basically doing like house parties and things like that, and then you know, you know, I teamed up with my you know, shy. That's my younger brother. So I teamed up with my younger brother, and then we started, you know, doing things out in South Queens. You know, with all the crews that was um out back then. So, so the dude like my brother, you know, I'm the most supreme Raheem, one half of the Almighty Force. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> so, uh, just, just to give a little bit of the hip-hop history of the Almighty Four, like my brother said, you know, I, I was a young man in the mid-70s, so I know he used to be going to all the jams. I remember he went to the battle between DJ Divine and the City of the Machine from Southside to Nickel Queens versus Grandmaster Flash from Uptown in the Bronx. And he used to come home with the, and tell me about the battles and everything. So I started listening to the tape from the battles. And, you know, at the time, I used to just run around. I wasn't an MC yet, but I was trying to be. And I was running around, you know, saying my brother's time. And then I used to listen to the Grandmaster. Well, I call him the Grandmaster Melly Bell, but Melly Bell was another MC that kind of influenced me that I wanted to want to be an MC along with my brother. So, you know, I was in junior high school at the time. So, you know, I finally started writing my own rhymes in the late 80s, 70s. And before you know it, by the time I was in high school, I was nice. And that's when my brother felt like I was good enough for us to team up. And that's when we formed a crew called the Civilized Two, which led into a from that, with another group from the neighborhood called Infinite Sound. And a good friend of mine, you know, Funky P. Pookie, he was part of the Infinite Sound. So we kind of had a battle. My brother wasn't there. It was just me versus, you know, the, the, the whole Infinite Sounds crew. And I ripped them all the new ones. And then when my brother came home from college that day, that's when he met the leader of Infinite Sounds, and then we combined to become the Almighty Four MCs. The name back then was Mike yeah. Crawford, Busy B, and the Four MCs. Yeah, and we did show we was we were performing locally, 
And then we started going up to, um, you know, going up to the Bronx. Jazz, rest in peace, Jazzy T, my man Troy. You know, he told us about, you know, the T Connection. Then we started going up there, you know, doing shows up in the um, T Connection, you know, with all the people, you know, who they, you know, who, who we know now, know what pioneers of hip hop. We you know back then that, that, you know, we were around the people that be calling the pioneers. We were just there doing our thing, like they was there doing their thing. You know, we were, uh, you know, we basically were from Queens. So, you know, you know, the love, the love wasn't always there. You know, some people showed us love, but we still, you know, we still kept going out there. And we still kept doing our thing. And then, and then when we were rocking in Queens, we were just doing shows, you know, with the, with the, with the Queens legend, the brother Cypher and Sound, the brother, um, the brother Divine from Infinity Machine, you know, they started like booking us in shows, and then you know we was we was just doing we was just doing our thing like that, you know that led us that led it to you know we did I don't know you what know, we did a few records you know with um with our man Rest in Peace on Stick and Bitch Records my man Don you know my name my man Smart D Don you know we um so we did we did a few records with him. And then, you know, we started doing, like, you know, like a basketball tournament, you know, which, which my son run now, you know. And, you know, we, we, you know, we were just, we were just out there. We were just doing our thing. We always, you know, we always was involved, you know. Like, you know, a lot of people, you know, we were proud of a lot of people that, that we did shows with back in the days, you know, because, you know, they went on, you know, signed with majors and they was, like, doing their thing, you know. But, you know, basically, you know, we, you know, we were all, we were, we basically were always there, you know, you know, so, you know, that's, that's it. Shaw, you miss, you, I miss anything, Shaw? Uh, uh, I don't think you missed anything, but yeah, you know, I, I was proud of the shows we did back in the early 80s, you know, up in the Peak Connection. You know, we were performing with, you know, the, the early pioneers of hip hop. Um, now we, we felt like we were the best crew in Queens because back then in the late seventies, early eighties, there wasn't that many crews of MCs or groups of MCs. You know, you had a few, you know, solo artists here and there, but we were like the only real group of five MCs and three DJs and we were like running everything in Queens. So, you know, my man Dad, you know, may he rest in peace. He felt like the best MCs, the best groups were all up down in the Bronx. And that's where we need to be. So that's kind of what led us to going up to the Bronx to show that we were just as good, if not better, than the groups that were performing up down back then in 1979, 1980. So that, that was our early contribution to hip-hop. And the one thing i got to ask, because I know this is probably like a cliche type of question, man, but I, I, like as you already know, today is so advanced, you know what I mean, when it comes to promotion for hip-hop or any music genre that is, people just take to the Internet. For the individuals that have just that are listening to this that might only know the internet age, what was it like actually getting your music out there and actually really pushing yourself way back in the golden age of hip hop? Because you really had to get your name on the streets. You didn't just open up a Twitter or a cell phone because they didn't exist. You really had to hustle on the streets to actually get your word around. <laughs> this is true. This is so true, you dare bottle. So to, to bring you back and and. and... Back in those days, there was no internet, and there wasn't even no CDs. Records weren't even being. There was a handful of records out: Sugar Hill Gang, uh, Super Rapping with Grandmaster Flash, Funky Four, and Plus One More. They was all on Enjoy Records. So you know, for the for the street MCs and the guys that were doing it on the street level, the crazy thing, the way the word used to get out, is guys used to come to the shows and record the shows on cassette tape with their boom box. And then they would copy those tapes, and before you know it, those tapes, that's, that's how your word got out back then and how people got to hear you perform. And people will make copies of the tapes, and the tapes will be generating all around the city, and that's how you knew who was who and who was nice and who was whack because it was all done on cassette tape recorded at the shows for the boom box. And also as well, you guys actually, in the year 1990, you guys actually released the 12-inch single vinyl titled The Greatest Story. 
I was wondering if you can actually tell our listeners the inspiration behind this iconic song. And of course, uh, has it actually been put out on the internet for uh, for our listeners to actually uh, listen to if they haven't already heard it? Well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the story. Yeah, right. You picked up on that. Yeah. No, but the greatest story, you know, we, you know, the area, the area that we lived in, you know, we had a lot of brothers. Yeah. They was falling, you know, to, you know, falling to the, uh, to the, to the game, to hustling. So, so the greatest story, you know, that was just, you know, because like, like oftentimes when people from the inner city, you know, was dying, you know, that wasn't. You know, the, a lot of times that didn't make the news, but but you know, other things was making the news. But but young brother is dying, and and that was happening around us often. You know, that often made the news. So the great story, you know, that was that's a story. You know about you know about you know like like one individual that like went that they went that route and then ended up dying before you really knew how great he was. And and you know, as I show my brothers about to say, you know, that 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 song, we have that song on our um on our YouTube page. So, you know, that's Almighty Force Entertainment, Ronald Martin. So, you know, if anybody wanna hear that that song now, that's on our YouTube page. And also as well, you guys actually inked a deal with uh, Shake and Bake Records as well back in the day. I was wondering if you can actually tell our listeners a story behind this record deal. And of course, what was it like just working for that label early on in your guys' careers? Okay, i like to jump in on that one. Now, we were pretty big from 1980 through, all through the 80s, you know, we were making a lot of noise in terms of our performances, you know. And uh, during um, that time, you know, we were pretty well known. We were what I would like to call the ghetto superstars of Southside to make a queen. And what happened is, you know, we were performing, doing all this, and finally uh, a young brother that actually actually witnessed our battle with Dr. Rock and the Four and back in 1983, when the guy was starting the record label, Shake and Bake Records, his name is Don Aiken, may he rest in peace. Uh, Don was looking for a group. And K Mel came and found us, and he was like, "Yo, I got a record deal for y'all, so let's go make it happen. Take and bake records." So we went on and we met Don. We discussed what we wanted to do on Take and Bake Records, and that's how that all you know formulated. So we find ourselves by 1989 when we signed with the record label. We were doing uh, hip hop already, like uh, uh, all over New York City. And even, you know, up and down the East Coast and a couple of tours we did in the mid-'80s, we were doing all of that. So finally we said, you know what? We feel we proved ourselves. Now we can sign our record deal, and, and so we can share our music to the world. So that's pretty much how we got down with Sick and Big Records. And Sick and Big Records, after, you know, the first year we put out uh, The Greatest Story and Chicken and Big, which was the title song, in the second year, we put out our next two songs on Taking Big Records, which was Build the Nation and Non-Believers. And that was a beautiful thing, because from the Build the Nation, we started a whole Build the Nation movement. And it even led to the Shake and Bake Variety Show, where me and Raheem co-hosted with Don. His name was Dee Smart. And we used to interview, you know, a lot of groups like Kooji Rap and Polo and Mr. Keith from the Lost Boys, one of the first guys that came on our television show. So we actually led, were doing our own TV show, which, you know, built it off from being on Take and Big Records. And speaking of Build a Nation, I got to say, that is actually one of my favorite songs actually by you guys. And I actually have it locked and loaded here on the FM dial to, to actually be played after this interview. So, you know what I mean? 30 plus years later, this song is still getting airplay down here in Canada. That's what's up. I'd yeah. love to hear that. Thank you. Appreciate that. And the one thing I've always wanted to know, because I, I do know, like, back in the day, a lot of people were uh, releasing 12-inch vinyls and singles and whatnot to really get their music out there. I, I, and I could be wrong about this, but I, I haven't saw it. I was wondering, what made you guys decide to not actually release a full-length fee, a full-length album? Like, do you guys have any plans in the future to actually kind of put everything together and actually release a full full record? Well, I got you that, that? Okay, uh, yeah. now... Um, Go ahead, Rob. Go ahead, Sean. 
Okay. <laughs> now, back then, when we signed, when we signed with Shake and Big Records, you know, it was we did our first two singles, and then we did, you know, a year later, we did two more singles. We didn't record an album back then. We had enough material for an album, but we were just gradually, just, you know, putting our records out there, getting them into the record stores. And, and, you know, we were, like I said, we were known for our performances. We were live, you know, MCs, you know, people that go out on stage do a show. So, you know, the studio thing, it wasn't new to us, but this was the first time we actually made recordings that were going on wax. So we didn't do an album back then, but so much was happening from the singles that we were putting out that, you know, we stayed busy. So now, bring it, like how you said, 30 years later, we are finally releasing our first album as the Almighty Four, and it's going to be a, a ten song album. Uh, it's going to be on all the streaming services. You know, we're working, we're still in you know talk with the you know distribution. You know, to get everything added to the streaming services. So we will be releasing our first uh, studio recording on our album in. 30 years, so this is, this is a big deal to us. It feels good, you know? And I gotta say, I, I, as a fan of you guys, I'm definitely looking forward to actually hearing a full-length record, man. I gotta say, you know what I mean? Good things come to those who wait, man, and I, can, I can't wait to hear it. Oh, thank you. Thank you, DJ Immortal. Thanks, thanks, man. And also, as well, aside from the music uh, music scene here for a few moments, I also saw that you guys actually started a non-profitable organization titled Almighty Force Basketball. I was wondering if you could tell us a bit more about this company, and of course, how can we actually get more involved and support this or this amazing organization and what you guys do? Yeah, well, the Almighty Force Basketball that was a that we started that in like '91, and and. You know, it was, you know, we started it because of the need of the community at the time, right? We, um, you know, we, you know, it was, it was a lot of things going on. Like, we, we know things are bad now, but even back then, it was a lot of things going on, you know, with a lot of young, young people in our community. So we figured that the best way for us to know our community is by knowing the young brothers in our community. So then, so we started, you know, the Almighty Fourth Basketball Tournament, and, you know, it, 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 it grew much bigger than we thought, you know, back then. Because we had, like, like you know, like major sponsors and from, like, like Mountain Dew, um, 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 New York Life Insurance. You know, we had, you know, we had a lot of people, the politicians in the community, they were supporting it. You know, now, you know, like, my, my son, he runs it, right? So... You know, by my my son, you know he um and he have a website, Almighty Force um web page, Almighty Force Basketball web page, and you know you get further information on on the basketball tournament, you know on YouTube as well. So any any support for the tournament because he took it to a level that we 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 didn't even take it because now he have like a traveling AAU team. And, you know, he's, he's, like, doing it all over the city where we just did it basically in, like, Brooklyn and Queens. In Queens, and then, and then later on we started doing it in Brooklyn. So my son, he does it, like, all over the city. He's, like, you know, and like I said, he have a traveling team. So, you know, any, any support, you know, like I said, there's an Almighty Force basketball webpage that, um, that, 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 that you can log on to to support. Yeah, and I would like to add a little to that. You know, how my brother was saying things were getting a little crazy in the neighborhood. We wanted to meet the youth in the neighborhood, and one of the best ways we did, we was able to do it was to start the Almighty Force Developmental League to real kids, you know, at, from the ages of 6, 8, 10 years old, you know, and like you said, basically to get to know the kids before the games when all them people got their clothes and so on. So the parents, you know, we, we the, and the way we started it, we literally went around the neighborhood, all the neighborhood schools, and we put flyers in the schools, not knowing what was going to come out of the flyers. We, we took the old hip-hop adage of putting out flyers that we were about to start this tournament, and lo and behold, the day that we had scheduled to start that developmental league, so many parents came out with their kids. I was so impressed, and we actually got to start it. 
And we definitely will use the basketball to teach important lessons of life to these children. You know, respect for yourself, respect for others, you know, respect for other people's property, respect for authority. So this is how we use our tournament. And we use uh, um, our, what I would call, you know, hood celebrity to attract, we use our name basically to attract people to the tournament. The name that we, you know, you know develop through the music business, you know, so... It was like, you know, we used our little celebrity to start something new in the community. And then, and plus, we had one of the best ball players that was from South Queens. That was our man, Cat Young. So, yeah. you know, he, he was a draw to the tournament as well. Yeah, definitely. Shout out to Cat Young. Yeah, shout out to Cat. So, so everybody, you know, like when we started doing it, and plus the park that we were doing our tournament in, it wasn't the actual name of the park. Because we we called it Ajax Park, but the name of the park actually was Drew Memorial Park. But the Ajax Park, that name, you know, that was like a popular name, you know, in um in South Queens. So when we started doing the tournament there, like like everybody wanted to wanted to be involved. So we did like a a, a little kid tournament, you know, like every age up to adults. And the one thing I have to ask, because when you guys said you had, you've been doing this since since the early early nineties, uh, have you ever had any uh, any kids that actually played for your guys' league that actually grew up and actually went on to being a pro basketball player in like the NCAA or of course the NBA? Yeah, yeah I got I got a big yeah. smile on my face for that question, DJ Morty. Yeah. I like to, to talk about uh, the success stories that came out of our tournament. Uh, one of the first names that come to mind. Someone we coached when he was 12 years old. He couldn't even walk and chew gum at the same time. One of the people we helped develop, and his name was Lamar Odom. And he's a pretty popular name all around the world, you know, because as he got older, you know, he went Hollywood. He won championships with the Los Angeles Lakers and Kobe Bryant. But then he married up our bastard. So Lamar is pretty well known right now all around the world. I really enjoyed his book, too. But, you know, it wasn't just Lamar. You know, we had uh, Royal Ivy, who came to our tournament, made it to the NBA, played 12 seasons, got a game from Rockdale Village, played a couple of years with the New Jersey Nets. I got to say, that's actually yeah. some phenomenal stuff, yeah. man. You know what I mean? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. And I almost forgot about my man Danny Green, who is still playing in the league for the Philadelphia 76ers. But, you know, we had a lot of guys like to us back then, DJ Immortal, that's the guys that made it to the league. But our success story was any kid that we developed, if they got a college to go to, if they got a college scholarship to play ball, to me that was success. It wasn't all about just making it to the league. Because a lot of guys that came to our tournament, they went overseas and they're still playing overseas and making a living out of basketball. But, you know, we had a few guys that made it to the league, you know, that I'm happy to say, you know. And Lamar went on to actually yeah. win the championship, so that was a, a big, you know, a proud moment for the neighborhood. Yeah, another, uh, another proud moment is, like, like to me is, you know, when you see a lot of these young brothers now, you know, they're, 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 you know, they're successful <laughs> men. You know, they're, they're, they're successful men. You know, they're, they're, they're you know, they're, um, you know, you know they're, they're, they're doing things. You know, you know, like like my son, for example, doing things for the community. You know, like like you know, we were at we was at you know um at at a show like a old school hip hop show over the summer, and young guys because you keep in mind a lot of them are like little little kids, but young guys they was coming up to me and say, telling me that you know they started their own programs. You know, after being a part of our program, so things like that. You know, to, to me, like, you know, seeing somebody go to the league, you know, like, you know, like, like Lamar and guys like Ray for Austin and people like that. Oh, Ray for Austin. Seeing them go to the league, go, go, you know, it, those are proud moments, but just seeing a lot of these young dudes, like, go up to do their grown man thing, that was, a, that's an accomplishment to me as well. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, and by around 2000, because we ran the tournament for about 20 years. You know, my brother, he retired from the tournament in 2010. I retired from the tournament in 2012. That's when his son, you know, my nephew, Javon, shout out to Hood, Javon Martin, uh, president of Almighty Force Basketball now. But when we retired from the tournament, 
to see Javon take it to the level that he took it, it was, it was great because, you know, it's basically what we did. We established a legacy that's being carried on. And how my brother said, all the young guys that's doing it with Javon, you know, they all grew up in the tournament too. And now they kind of took the reins and they took the ball and they running with it. But one of my, you know, favorite times during the tournament was the early 2000s, like 2000 to 2005, that's when DJ Clue joined the tournament and, and got behind us, you know, as a sponsor of the tournament. And what I used to like about having DJ Clue in the tournament is because he used to bring all these and one ball players to the tournament, and he used to bring the hip hop artists like Fabulous and Joe Budden. So Budden is not a bad ball player, believe it or not. But these are the guys, you know, that came. Lenny Trust was like a big basketball name at the time. Back then, they were saying he was better than LeBron James. So, you know, having that, that you know, part of the tournament, it was great because you kind of got celebrity status. Lala Anthony used to always come out there while she was working with MTV. And, and you know, it, it kind of took our tournament to the level where people were calling us the Russian Park Tournament of Queens. And that's how big our tournament was getting in the mid-2000s. And also as well, uh, going back to the hip-hop thing uh, here for a moment, I also noticed as well that you guys are actually a part of the hip-hop collective, the Day One Originals. I was wondering if you can actually tell us a bit more about that. And of course, what actually made all you hip-hop pioneers decide to come together and form this amazing collective? Yeah, they, they, they the, the funny thing is, is they, you know, they came, they came to us. You know, we like, you know, we wasn't, you know, doing, doing the hip-hop. You know, we were just like, you know, you know, doing our thing. We never left hip-hop. So we always was like doing like like little shows and doing stuff for like the schools. You know, my 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 wife she had a she had a dance school at the time, so we would always be helping like helping them out. You know, shout out to the ASCII dancers. So so we always was like doing things, but you know the brother the brother of Southside Kid and the brother Kid Flash. You know, they some um, day one original. They 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 came to us really. And they said, and and in all in all honesty, they're the ones who really like you know like sparked the fire back under us, you know, and really like got us back into it. So you know, and then, and then, and then, and it was cool, you know, like, like to have like you know like those brothers and like the other brothers like like um understanding from Cypher Sound, Divine from Infinity, you know, Livio, Fresh SFM, you know, they're like like to to to, to team with all of these brothers. And to be to still be doing stuff because you know we still got checks that we did with them that we're gonna put out like later on in the year, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I have to ask you guys, man, what is next for yourselves? I know you actually guys are gonna be dropping, like you mentioned, a full length album for the first time in thirty years. I have to ask. Other than that, what is next? For Almighty Force, is there anything we happen to miss during this broadcast? Anything else you guys do do still wish to talk about or promote? Well, we got you here live on the Canadian FM dial this evening. Well, you know, I would like to say, like my brother mentioned earlier, uh, you can catch you know everything we're doing, Almighty Force music on our YouTube page, Almighty Force Entertainment slash Ronald Martin. But you know, what I see, like Almighty, you know, also that was born from us doing Almighty Force. You know, MC is uh, Almighty Force Basketball. Now we also have Almighty Force Entertainment. And what we're doing with Almighty Force Entertainment is, first, like I said, we're going to release our album under Almighty Force Entertainment. Following this album, I'm working on my solo project, the YT Shahi Project, which will be coming out in the second quarter. And in the third quarter of the year, we're going to be releasing my nephew, Azar X, you know, he, he's releasing, he's got putting together his mixtape that's also going to come out under Almighty Force Entertainment. And at the end of the year, we're going to do some collab- a collaboration album with other rappers, including the other, you know, the Day One Original, Cypher Sound, Southside Kid, and Southside Kid, the MC and Kid Flash from 17 Beats Productions, and any other, you know, rappers that we're going to come across during the year, they're going to be welcome to come on and do the collaboration album that we're going to put out by the end of the year. And I got to say, that definitely sounds like a phenomenal project, man. It definitely sounds like 2022 is the year of Almighty Force, man. I'm super excited. Oh, boy, Brandon. Yeah, we're excited, too. 
Let me tell you, man. Very exciting. You know, we we did our li- we did our family and friends listening party, and I want to give a shout out to DJ No Glover. We did our family and friends event in December, and since we did that show, it's amazing. I don't want to jinx ourselves, but we're actually being contacted about tours for this year, uh, a, a five city tour. Um, we're doing uh, we're getting calls from you know all over the country. People are calling and reaching out to us. It's about fourteen shows. And if we done got contacted about just this year alone, and we're just on January 30th, this is just January. So what's going to happen once the album drops? I mean, I, I, yeah, look, it's going to be a pretty busy year for the Almighty Force, and I'm more than excited, bro. I'm telling you, I'm more than excited. But also, this is the time of the interview, guys, that I do give a chance for the individuals that slide into the radio station out, uh, airwaves. There's a chance to give, like, shout-outs to whomever they want to give shout-outs to, but most of all, your social media handles. That way our listeners can follow you and stay updated on everything you got going on if they're not already doing so. <laughs> That's dope. Okay, uh, first I'd like to give a shout-out to my stylist, my wife and girl, my wife, Darcy. You know, she's the one that styles me and makes sure I'm always looking fresh when I step out. I'd like to give a shout out to my son and his wife and my grandchildren out in North Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina. I like to call them the Super Little, the Martin Party of Five. Like I said, I'll give another shout out to DJ No Lover. Shout out to Azar X, who executive produced the video for Birth of the Almighty. And uh, shout out, you know, definitely, oh, my man, I want to give a shout out to my man Funky P. Poopy, one of the original Almighty Force MCs. I want to give a shout out. To Sugar Bear, who produced three of the songs on the album that's coming out. I want to give a shout out to my DJ from back in the early 79, 80 days, El Buddha Bless. We called him Busy B back then, and Disco Jean, who was one half of Wright Brothers Busy B and the Fourth and C's. Yeah, I'd like to give a shout out, you know, to my wife, you know, my wife, and, and, and you know, like all the members of her dance group, the African dancers. Back in the day, they was like they they were like a big part of our community. I like to give a shout out to um to my son Devon for the things that he's doing. And, you know, I give a shout out to to my daughter, all my nieces and nephews, and you know to all all the all the producers that helped us. You know, oh, yeah. the album that we're doing like J Mel, J Mel. You know, um, C J the Great. You know, um um you know the uh, and 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 I gotta give a shout out to my man Kid Flash. You know, because he, he definitely, you know, we, we, we're doing a lot of work with him, you know, as part of that day one original project. You know, so, you know, like, shout out to, you know, shout out to the Southside Queens, you know? Oh, yeah, for you know, the Southside, we outside. All the brothers, yeah, yeah, all the, all, the, all the brothers from ADAX, you know, that, that, that we ran the tournament, we ran the tournament at the, the, the Lincoln Park, the Lincoln Park crew, you know, to give a shout out to, you know, all... all you know, all, 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 all my ball playing family. You know, you know, love. You know. And uh, DJ Bottle, if I could just throw a couple of more in there, people I know that's tuned in tonight. You know, my man Danny out in Atlanta. All my cousins and family out in Atlanta, Georgia. Special shout out to my DDG family in particular, my staff, Rob, Mark, and Regina. And um, I would like to also, you know, chime in and say that. Over the years, you know, we did a, a lot of shows, like I said, in the 80s, Jay-Z, DJ Scratch, Jazzo, the early 80s, and with Grandmaster Flash and Series 5. You know, we've been doing this for a really, really long time. So, you know, I'd just like to give a shout-out, you know, to everybody. And like my brother said, especially the producers that helped us on this album, because I think we used five different producers on this album, but i got to give a shout-out to all the pioneers of hip-hop that was back there with us that's still doing it, and i like to give a shout-out to Lady Razzmatazz, who you probably heard close out the, the Build a Nation record, because she's still doing her thing out here in Southside Queens, too. You know, Southside Queens, you know, <laughs> when people speak about Southside Jamaica Queens, like, I guess you could say the, the biggest artist that came out of Southside, Onyx, Lost Boys, you know, Mr. Peaks and the Lost Boys, 50 Cent, Ja Rule, you know, Nicki Minaj, but, you know, the, the, the brothers that followed us, you know, that, that came behind us was Mr. Peaks and the Lost Boys and Onyx. Like, Fredro from Onyx, he was my little man that when we were going to do shows 
and USA skating rink back in the mid eighties, we should see him and his posse online and we would take him off the line and let them walk in with us, you know. But that's how far back, you know, we go back with Fredro and Suave, you know. Yeah, and anybody that wanna see any of the work that we're doing, they get any of the any of the shows or the songs that we did like back in the days, they can they can see it on on the Almighty Force Entertainment YouTube page. You know, Ronald Martin. Almighty Force Entertainment slash Ronald Martin. You see all the work that we're doing. We got our we have our last show, we had the shows that we've been doing since we came back out with the Day One Originals and we have um, you know, like you know, the couple of videos that we did. You know, um, so, so, you know, Almighty Force Entertainment on YouTube, Slack Ronald Martin. And I'd like to give uh, my Facebook, um, Jeffrey L. Martin, that's my Facebook, on Instagram. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, Jeffrey L. Big Child Martin is the Facebook. Jeffrey L. Martin is my Instagram. So those are my social media, you know, that I use to keep in touch with everybody. And I mean, I think you didn't mention that you're on WhatsApp now or something like that. Yeah, but that, but you know, but but Almighty Force Entertainment, um, Ronald Martin, YouTube. That's how that's how you can see all of our work. The things. <laughs> all right. All right. And I got to say, first and foremost, guys, thank you so much for just giving us a bit of your time here this evening and sliding into the 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM airwaves. It definitely was an honor and most definitely a privilege. And also, thank you so much for pioneering a genre of music and a, a, and a movement that everyone has enjoyed for so many, so many years worldwide, man. So thank you so much for paving the way for what hip hop truly is. Thank you, DJ Mortal. Appreciate it. Hey, thank you. Hey, thank you for having us. Oh, yeah. Sure. Award winning DJ Immortal. <laughs> hey, I definitely appreciate the love, guys. I really do, man. It, it's not every day you get the opportunity to chop it up with some hip hop pioneers, man. So, honestly, I just got to extend my hand and say thank you so much again, man, from the bottom of my heart. It definitely was a truly, truly an absolute honor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah thank you for having us. Yes, yes, and it feels good to know that something that we help, you know, introduce to the world is now a worldwide phenomenon that, you know, is it, 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 recognized everywhere. So what we did in the streets, the b-boying, the emceeing, the DJing, the graffitiing, to see what it turned into today, it's like a phenomenon. And I'm, I'm grateful for that, you know, that we played a part in bringing that to the world. And people like you, DJ Immortal, that's keeping us alive, you know, with your shows like this, where you're honoring the pioneers of hip-hop and letting the younger generation see where we came from and allowing them to hear our story. So thank you, DJ Immortal. Hey, guys, you are most certainly welcome. I got to say, definitely stay safe out there in the Big Apple of New York City, man. And hopefully down the line we can make this happen again sometime soon. But for now, definitely enjoy the rest of your guys' Sunday night. Thank you, brother. All right. Thank you, man. Thanks for having us, man. All right. You are most certainly welcome. Have yourself a wonderful night.